Hello everybody, so uh, how's everyone doing? This is Alexander Williamson with the secret history living inside your aquarium. Your aquarium, my aquariums, lots of aquariums. So, what's going on, what's new? Tilapiosaur, what's up? Fake name, what's up? This might be a relatively quick live stream, but I felt like I hadn't ch checked in with you guys in a while, and I wanted to, you know, do that. So, hey, Betsy, I, uh, I also want to, as always, forewarn lately, uh, oh, setting up, what's this, Bob, Bob Kaler's Fish Hobby, setting up a new 40 breeder now for Rainbow Fish. That's awesome. Uh, I'm debating what to put in my 40 breeder over here. Right now I've got some Tetras that were super cheap at Aquarium Co-op and Aquarium uh, Zen. Uh, I got some Steve's Aquatics Low. I got some uh, Silver Tips for like a dollar a piece and then I think it was a dollar fifty each for the Black Neon Tetras. Or maybe even a dollar. I don't know. So it, it was very inexpensive. So I dropped like 20 bucks. And uh, and ended up with uh, what I have in the tank behind me. Which we will get into focus. And I will show you guys in a moment. Um, as always, forewarned is that uh, I... I'm having a little trouble tonight with my words and just it's like 90 I don't know what it's it's a hundred in this room right now but it's 90 some degrees outside and just kind of hot and miserable anyways for Seattle no one has AC the house is hotter than that um, but the fish room is humid and hot and so um, yeah, that's not helping any of the, uh, what do you want to call it? Okay, so if you don't know, I got hit, hit by lightning. It, it scrambled my brain a little bit about five weeks ago, and now I'm, um, uh, slur words and so forth and so on. So, pardon if that happens this evening, but I wanted to show with you guys what I've been up to. Uh, basically, um, so I have this bed here, and I have on the other side, if I'm looking through the camera up here, I've got a 20 long that is not a mosquito. <laughs> I've got, let me turn this around for you. I've got a 20 long that's split into three pieces. Uh, for breeding stuff. I've got another 20 long that's a grow out and has some Coreys and some Endlers. My Japanese blue stuff is all in there, uh, the projects. And then I've also got the mismatch uh, Leopard Endlers in here along with the Pleco family and the Tatia Catfish as well as the Julii Corridora. So even though no one looks like they're home most of the time in that tank, uh, they are. They're just doing their thing, hiding. So, <laughs> And there's a bunch of extra plants in this tank and in this tank floating because of what I will show you in a moment as people are trickling in. Also down here we've got um, uh, a Caradina shrimp tank and a Caradina slash Neo Caradina shrimp tank, and it turns out that uh, nice rack. Thank you, Bob. Uh, it turns out. Let's see if we can find one here. <clears throat> so I've been putting my Aru two fry in here. They hatch. So Aru two Pseudomagill Aru twos uh, are the the specific species is Pseudomagill. Uh, Gertrude Aru 2 and they are from uh, Papua and that's not Papua New Guinea that's just straight Papua and basically that's the Indonesian half of the island and then off the shore there are some islands in between there in Australia 
and they are known as the Aru Islands, the second collection point, and that is where we get the name Aru 2. So, Aru 2 collection point, um, you can see the crystal reds in here. Come on. And uh, actually, Rob from Flip Aquatics said he was going to be sending me a, a, a sort of get well soon slash, uh, you know, drop his name a little bit uh, in exchange for it. Uh, some, some babies and stuff as he's cleaning up tanks. Uh, so that should be really exciting and we can get some new things going. Uh, I cleared out room at the very top of of the, this rack here for that. You just got a 20 long. I love 20 longs. They're very versatile. You can cut them in half. Uh, well, don't cut them in half. You can put a divider in them, and that serves you very well. You can do a lot with that. So the thing that we were looking for in here is the, the Aru 2 fry. And they're teeny. I mean, and when I say teeny, I mean teeny tiny. They are smaller than these little shrimp here. And so they have all the... Whoa, it flipped back around. They have all the little bugs and seed shrimps and things that their little hearts could, uh, could ever dream of. And... Uh, but I don't see the two of them that are in, that I thought were in here, and that doesn't mean a whole lot with this stick that's in here. This thing is massive. You know what? In fact, I think I'm going to move this stick. I got it free uh, from a friend, and, you know, a free stick. You can never give up, uh, pass by a free stick, right, guys? Uh, with Java uh, ferns and moss all over it. But it's uh, this tank, first of all, is covered in duckweed and stuff like that. And second of all, let's go into the bathroom real quick. Just make sure there's a. I'm going to rinse this off real quick. We're going to get to the, the big display soon. Um, but basically, I'm just making sure there's no. Uh, and I know, yes, this is chlorinated water. I'm just washing off the stick part and apparently some snails. Uh, but I don't like the duckweed that's stuck. The stuck duck. And uh, it'll be just fine. Don't worry. It's going into another tank. Um, you can also see that he, when he gave me this stuff, he gave me whatever else it had on it, which appears to be... Uh, this like puffy moss or, or uh, what do you call it not moss but uh, growth not, and I don't think puffy is the right term I think it's like fluffy or <laughs> I can't remember it has a name something like that and it shows up mostly on this uh, hey, hey Bentley um, fish dreams welcome but my shrimp are eating this stuff off of the stick pretty well so um, I'm just gonna toss this in to another tank for now and uh, that should free up a little bit of space right now for uh, trying to find the mysterious fry from the day before the day after tomorrow is that today I don't know I want it to mean today, whatever I'm talking about. So, we got lots of little blue shrimp chilling in here. And, uh, hopefully, I'll check back later, but there should be an Aru 2 or, or 2 uh, hanging out in there. But if they're not, which uh, would be sad... This flow is a little bit strong for them. RU2s are so teeny tiny that they actually can drown or whatever, be beaten up by the flow of anything. Even even like that could could beat them up. But the good news is, uh, have you heard the good news? Is that we have a whole 
a bunch of eggs in here right now. They're looking really good. Get them out of the direct light, but they are, um, if you can see the little gray, little gray spots like in there, little eggs. So should be good. Jess Shrimp Granny. Hey, uh, whoa, Bob. Love me some silver tips. Have 15 in my Amazon puffer tank. Very feisty. Schooling fish. Eager to wait another history video when you're up to it. Yeah, Bob, I am. I really want to do a history video. I have been taking a lot of notes. Um, linear, like, thinking has been. And thank you so much for the super chat, by the way. That's uh, very helpful. Because right now, uh, that and uh, the portion of uh, Patreon are what are fueling my fish room. And that includes utilities and all right now because uh, we're really strapped for money with all the medical expenses going on. So I really appreciate that. That's very kind of you. And uh, I will get a history video going soon because I feel like I've betrayed the channel name by not doing one recently. Uh, I showed these to Bentley Pasco the other day, and if you haven't checked out his channel, by the way, it is blowing up, catching uh, catching some popularity, and uh, it, it's well worth it, his fish and his... Uh, his projects and knowledge are all really great. So check out Bentley Pasco's channel. It's just his name. Um, but yeah, he came over and uh, he saw these. Uh, these are... So what I did was I took uh, leopard endlers, which are from Lucas Brett's down here. Crossed them once with uh, blue Japanese endlers. Chris for Chris for... Well, hello. And then I got the paddle tails that I could, whichever ones I could get into a paddle tail form. And with the blue top up here and spots on the tail. So that took another two or three generations to get these guys sorted out with the blues. And then I crossed them again with the blue... Uh, with the blue uh, Japanese endlers and ended up with these. So th they have basically, let's see, what would that be? Only an eighth or something like that of leopard endler in them. And it's basically come out in this cool tail uh, that has yellow, but it fades into green. And uh, these two are my are my boys, plus this little guy here, who, when mate, when mating with the blue, Japanese blue endlers, um, he, since he's a native one, he it will produce uh, exact spitting images of himself, essentially, so far. Um, so... The only thing that's a weird little quirk is that uh, when you when you breed uh, guppies, if they have sorry about the traffic, it's hot as heck, so the the doors open or the windows open. Um, last crib is still chilling in here. Um, she's just a lonely girl, but she's in her almost spawning colors all the time, which is nice. Thanks, Vstag. Yeah, hit that like button if if you if you like. Um, but so basically, we've got some pretty cool looking uh, endlers, I think. And that yellow bolt in their in their uh, tail. Plus, some of them have uh, leopard print, and I would like to see tiger uh, print. So I will cross them uh, once or twice more in the tanks upstairs. But what I really like about this uh, liar tail is that they can flex it when they're showing off for the other, the other gender, or I guess each other too. The males seem to do it just as much with just males in the tank. But they can uh, really get acrobatic with it. And uh, these are... I think these are actually taking 
taking uh, first place over my um, my leopard endlers as much as I love them I still love them uh, but they are and, and this is like a pale uh, honor or whatever you'd want to say of how good these guys do look in person they have such iridescence they turn purple and white in their tail and then yellow and green and turquoise and then back to like a periwinkle uh, when they're spawning so or you know coloring up not spawning they're live bears but yeah so hopefully we get some more of these guys out soon and they don't the females don't just pick the the one oddball in here that is this is how I got what I'm about to show you, the big thing, the big uh, part of the entire live stream tonight, which is the new tank in Aquascape, which let's let's do that in just one sec. Ah, gotcha. You thought I was going to say no. Uh, so RU2s up here, they, all four of them, so two pairs, seem to be producing uh, about six eggs a day whereas when I had one pair in each thing they would each produce like five to seven or eight eggs a day so I think when they're all in a big group like that they're either eating the eggs or fighting over eggs so much that or dominant so much that they're not laying them I don't know so they're probably going to get their curtain reinstalled here, and I'll just put two in there, uh, do two separate sections. But this is also another uh, live bear in the works. This is a true guppy. I think this is my only full guppy in the house. But it is a red delta tail uh, platinum snake skin. So the, the front is like a platinum snake skin, and the tail is going to be... Uh, just like a beautiful red with a little hint of blue uh, in in some of the smaller fins so those are from Dean Tweedle uh, he's you've probably seen on aquarium co-op he's known as the master breeder um, but he's been breeding those and uh, yeah I can't get rid of this girl even though she's such an oddball and she's probably lonely but she's just so pretty so I hold on to her and the lighting here is actually really poor it's the stuff that I made myself for about 20 bucks and so eventually I don't know when I got to get a new even just cheapo light um, this it is a cool blue light which is nice Ooh, you're getting a pre preview of the tank due to optical well reflections um so let's get right over to that so dun, 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 dun. so here's the new tank hey uh bentley uh hi <laughs> so here's the new tank um i wanted to show you guys this before we look into it which is uh, sometimes known as red mahogany manzanita. It's basically just manzanita that has a vein. It's hard. It's from uh, the mountains of Oregon and California, Nevada, and uh, the Sierra Nevada mountain range specifically. And this piece has quite the story to it which is that Tom Barr, who's well known in the aquascaping and you know, just fish keeping community to a lot of people. Uh, he is the one who went out and scavenged it uh, and brought it back. And he brought it to Steve Waldron at Aquarium Zen. And then after that, uh, I came and saw it because uh, if I'm up to it, uh, let me back up. So Steve Waldron from Aquarium Zen and Tom Barr were asked to be brought in by Amazon to redo some corporate offices with paludariums, living wall kind of things, and um, wabikuzas, and, and also just uh, 
more aquascaping nature style 88 style tanks so it's a big task to do and I said to Steve let me help you well Tom ends up not being able to or I don't know if he has a previous commitment or I, I don't know what happened but now it's just down to Steve and I and his employee at the shop Leslie uh, who's also in GSAS the Seattle Fish Club and they are going to be working on, I think it's a total of six, six foot by, it's like 20 inches or 24 inches by 16 or 18 inches tall and then six feet long. So they're kind of funky, but if, if wanted in the future, then there could be a living wall slash waterfall type feature added to those tanks but they're kind of going to be I think giant wabikuzas with some fish at the base and more concentrated on plants for in, in the interest of time and of maintenance so this is the new tank and it is a 40 breeder um, now it is a 28 gallon tank <laughs> or something like that. I have also put it on cinder blocks for those of you who saw it on the channel and said, oh, the cinder blocks are the wrong way. You are totally correct. They are the wrong way. But with this uh, wood, with, with pine wood all the way around, uh, we're, we're totally good to go. This is uh, treated pine wood and uh there's there's a a friend of mine who's a structural engineer and material science data specialist and he's been doing it for 30 years he has a program we plugged in all the parameters and everything and it says that uh this should hold 790 pounds or something like that and that's the uh, it, it could hold double, but that's the safety guideline for the materials, like that the program spits out when you put in all the variables. Um, if you had put it the other way, the bricks uh, do, they are eight times stronger, the bricks. But is if you're doing big spans across an open space with like two by fours or something, uh, the bricks don't matter quite as much because uh, unless you're doing really tall racks because uh, they could still fail anyhow so I don't know kind of an odd little quirk of working on it he thought that it would be an interesting thing to run through his computer program and of course I wasn't gonna fight him on it so the other thing about this piece of wood is if you notice so when I lay back in bed it looks like this now some people may not like that at all uh, because I ha I couldn't afford a rimless tank um, and the situations people like uh, like Betsy and uh, Jess well, aka Grimp Granny and Bob who just did the super chat thanks again Bob uh, I've been able to put this together and uh, while I have my spine surgeries and things like that as well as uh, some other surgeries that are in the works uh, most likely and a lot of treatment um, including occupational therapy trying to relearn to you know throw and catch a ball or write my name all that kind of stuff um, I wanted this, uh, you know, I, I wanted this wood, and it was kind of a non-negotiable thing, like, where I was like, you know what, that reminds me of the bolt of lightning that hit me for some reason, the way it, it, it was laying in the shop, and then it all came down to there, and then it has this kind of twisted uh, look to it, like, graded DNA, and then an infinity loop kind of thing. Um, fishy snowman, hello. Uh, and so 
I was like, all right, I'm going to get that thing. How much is it, Steve? And Steve, being the nice guy that he is, traded me uh, a dozen inch-long fingerling plecos, uh, green dragons, and uh, 40 of those guppies, or uh, sorry, endlers that I showed you with the, uh, with the orange on them and the funky fin shape. And so that was nice of him to hook me up with uh, a way to pay for an otherwise probably three, 300-ish, maybe more dollar piece of wood uh, in, in the shop. Like just the amount of dense, sturdy uh, curves and tangles and splits in this wood naturally are just incredible um, and uh, it's just it's a beautiful piece of wood um, up out of the water there's even more red the way I oriented it and I haven't quite decided how the angle that it'll be in the tank for sure this aquascape is not complete but I think the name of the aquascape is settled, and I think it's going to be called Just Subscribed. All right, well, thank you. Uh, back each other. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet and you dig it. Uh, but definitely back in each other's channels is a good thing to do. I like, I like it when uh, the chat leads to people discovering one another's channels and things. But in any case, so really love that Manzanita. Um, and this piece is five feet by some odd, you know, four and a half feet. And if you measure out all the, the tangles and stuff, there's some sections that are eight feet. So it's it's kind of, it's like a scraggly tree, but when you get this kind with that red, uh, red hardwood that's carvable actually running through it, and it's got knots in it from years and years of being windblown and uh, extreme temperatures, sunlight and snow and all that kind of stuff, um, basically you end up with these great spots to tuck moss in. I have used no, no ties or anything like that. What is the name of the wood? It is Manzanita, and that's M-A-N-A-Z-I-T-A, man, M-A-N-Z-A-N-I-T-A. Yeah, I think so. Sorry, guys, my I can't spell out. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Shrimp Granny. Um, but, it, yep, thank you. Betsy got it covered. Uh, found in Oregon, California, Nevada. Usually, there are several kinds of manzanita, but it's found predominantly up high, up in the alpine area. And then there's also some that grows right on the coast and is like a tangled, brambly stuff. Whereas the stuff that grows up in the mountains lives a very long time and I'm talking like thousands of years they've they've found uh, this is interesting so the tetras have decided that they are comfortable apparently because they are uh, doing their little jousting deal and they are going into the bushes and hiding and fighting over territory and uh, supremacy, I suppose. There's probably a female in here, and she's. There's probably an egg situation actually in in all reality going on, and this guy is defending his little nest. So what I haven't installed yet into this aquascape, and I'll tell you a little bit about how I built it. Um, there's a video I just put out, but there's actually a really detailed video. Uh, oh, Bob, you saw it. She dashed out earlier. Good to know. Also, all of the other tetras, the uh, neon, black neon tetras, are over here. Now, they were upstairs, and the 
the uh, ammonia is still at 0.5 in this tank, but some of these seasonal tetras, uh, and by that I mean they live in like mud puddles that are just like disgusting and really hot and no oxygen, and then the other part of the year they live in beautiful, lush, flowing rivers. But some of them can tolerate adverse uh, conditions a lot better than others. Both of these tetras I've found to be fairly tough little tetras, uh, or, you know, larger. Here's actually a full-grown one that I had from a while back when uh, uh, before I bought all these new little guys. So, they're all getting super nippy, which is interesting. I don't know what their problem is, why they're doing that. Um, but... They are a schooling tetra, and if you put something in the tank that scares them, they will snap out of their inner fighting, their uh, fighting amongst themselves, and they will go straight to uh, schooling up in formation. Uh, so, why don't we give them a little treat and see if that calms them down? So, earlier today, I got a hold of outside in my uh, little work area, I, in the carport, I got a bunch of uh, seed shrimp and daphnia and mosquito larvae. So, we're going to go ahead and pour some of that in and watch these guys just, look at that, just clean it up. I mean, it's insane to watch them do that. Let's try in the more thicketed area. Let's see what happens over here. Got one guy on it. it doesn't seem like the others are keen on what's going down yet. But they will when they squiggle or wiggle they'll definitely find them. But, I really like the silver tip tetras. I think that for their price, they are so underrated. They do get a little nippy, they do get a little big, but if you have the proper tank for them, especially like a tank with bigger fish, um, they kind of, that kind of dithers them out. It kind of calms them down a bit. Um, and uh, makes them less of little little buttheads, little jerks. Um, but let's talk about this scape a bit now that we've got the fish eating a little bit. Then we short work of that Daphnia. Uh, the only thing is, I hope there's not mosquito larvae in here that they miss and I have to deal with when it hatches. <laughs> now they'll find it. So, essentially, I built this for $22, the, the, um, let's try to zoom out of this, there we go, eh? sorry guys, it's just the way the zoom works on this thing, uh, I built this and I left it open to show you guys before I close it all up and finish it, but, We've got the wood where I cut it off there, the counterweight rock. We've got caves throughout the back there so that other fish, if I go with the pestos or, you know, something like that, cribs, they'll have caves or plecos, thing. But I use filter media bags. Sandbags probably would have been better if I could have found some sort of cotton or cloth drawstring. Uh, bag that was a cubic foot or half a cubic foot these were each half a cubic foot and I filled them first with a layer of lava rock then with a layer of PVC pipes that had been sitting in other tanks so that there's some flow through it and then with substrate uh, like filter floss uh, uh, so not substrate, uh, apologies on my words, but uh, filter floss, so medium filter media, 
and put that in and then more lava rock and repeat and these things are basically oh I don't know maybe maybe eight inches tall or something like that and another eight to ten inches wide but you can really shape them you can keep them kind of round or you can turn them into a wedge just don't fill them up all the way and then leave the drawstring a little loose as you can see this tank is uh what is it eight 18 or uh, 16 inches tall so looks like we got probably less than halfway to the top with that now the bag actually stops about i'm going to put the bottom of the phone right so like right there it's just hidden um you can kind of see how high it goes up so i need to probably add some more soil uh but then i planted an entire row in the very back of this whole tank tucked in behind the sandbag so there's two sandbags or uh, media bags full and then rotala of uh, six kinds of rotala and then ludia several types and those are all planted along the back and then here we've got mini dwarf hair grass it wasn't a nice grid uh, last night, the Tetras decided to pull it all out, so it was all floating. I don't know what happened. Not all of it, but choice pieces. And uh, still have some areas to continue to uh, decorate, uh, tuck things in. I could put in like a nice sword or crypt or bulbitis. Uh, and the opportunity to put in more soil. So this is a super cheapo light. I think it was 30 bucks. Uh, it has no ability to grow plants, but it does have, let's see here if I turn this off, it does have kind of this nice effect of, can you guys see this? Can I get it to focus like I see it? It does have this nice backlighting effect where you just see the back meadow in here, as I call it. And that back meadow is lifted, um, so the height is right here on the glass. Let me step back a bit. Is right here on the glass. You can see from the top, so right about halfway. And then the rocks, which I, they're not in a set position, they're just holding things in place, uh, will be moved around. And more Anubias and things will be gathered and grown and, and, and tucked in here whereas uh, you know see they kind of school better in the darker areas I think the direct sunlight kind of freaks them out in the wild maybe they feel safer under the sticks and stuff um, but the goal is to have nice looking rather than uh, tattered boosts all over as kind of buds on this branch in this tree and then to probably do some sort of moss wrap it with uh, java moss or something like that and just get a nice cool look and then to use some of the twigs that I end up pruning to put them in here so the title of this this episode this uh, the boost you gave me is doing really well. It's so pretty. Awesome. So I can't remember um, which did I give you the sing what is it called? Sing uh oh. Now what have I gone and done? So I got this Fluval 3.0 light and it runs from your phone, but I can't switch pages on or can't switch stuff around on the phone because uh oh right right i gave you the uh the katherine uh might have been the red something i don't know i'll have to i'll have to look at my notes of which which ones i gave to who but the names of boosts beyond, there's kind of like three or four main categories, but beyond that, it's all kind of made up by whoever when they decide it's a strain. Kind of like I decided I'm going to call those Endlers 
uh, Japanese blue electric bolt uh, endlers or electric bolt endlers uh, because of the lightning strike and the fact that they've got that electric yellow stripe and strike through them essentially. Um, I think all the fish that I'm raising right now currently uh, all the endlers and uh, the guppy projects as well as, uh, let's see, what else do I have? Uh, some rainbow fish and the uh, Ancestress, which is the green dragon plecos. Um, I'm selecting the longest fin ones that, because they have the recessive long fin genes. But it's not absurd long finage, which is what I like. I think it can get out of control really fast. And I like it to be kind of subtle but graceful rather than so large it's like weighing down the poor critter. Um, but yeah, so then what the next problem you have, and I, so this, this light, speaking of problems, let me undo this. Uh, speaking of problems, the light is hooked up to the phone. I can't minimize the screen on the phone or it's going to tank uh, the app that's running here live and uh, I wanted to thank Jess for sending me a new filter that was super sweet of her and her husband thanks guys uh, she got a good deal on one or something and uh, I think she's telling a fib because I think she's just a sweetheart and hooked me up with a filter and I think they went out of their way. Uh, I don't believe this mystery story. Uh, so, but regardless, thank you so much. So, I still will be planting some crypt and, uh, you know, maybe I'm trying to think what else I might. The hedge lotta or some, some funky plants in here. Maybe some uh, red mini butterfly or something like that. Um, and put that in here but this will kind of be an island here and when I sleep with my head on this side this filter won't be here forever it'll the, I'll have it down to one filter but this ADA aqua soil is so dusty and the dust has ammonia and nitrates in it and nitrites so I don't want it in the tank and I'm trying to kind of speed cycle it by using pulled out all the media and, and I'm using uh, cycled media as well as the stuff inside the bags but what I was gonna say is the next issue you have when you build a slope like that and I almost went with building like a full-on cliff with a, a cut back in the bank that kind of hangs out but just didn't get there, didn't have the time or the, uh, I guess, motivation. I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, it was, yeah. So, basically here, uh, where we come in, the hill is sliding because of gravity. And so I put some stones in. And this creates these shoots where it still continues to slide, especially like if a net hits it or if the fish uh, are, are kind of like nipping at some of the vegetation. So what I've done is you can either take little plastic things or um, anything that won't, you know, give off a toxic uh, elements and w is is rigid you can insert like cards or like plastic pieces into slopes to make a slope now this is a gradual enough slope that up top the slope just naturally comes down like this and then the the appearance of the cliff just occurs with the way I've put the rocks down but I'd like it to be a little more extreme up at the top so um, maybe a little more jagged or something but you guys can really see now like the moss and the greenery and the theory that that will be taking over uh, shortly 
uh, in several months of growing. We're going to pop upstairs in a minute just so I can show you how things fill in. So where you see mostly rock now, you probably won't in a few weeks. So the, the other aspect of this that's kind of interesting is that I have uh, planted, just as you would on a real hillside, I've planted... Uh, plants with good root systems, Blixa and uh, Rotalas and Ludwigias in the slopes and in the shoots and so hopefully if you can get it to balance and shoot like that that, that, it, that kind of funnels all the stuff that's rolling downhill if you can get the roots to take hold it'll act as a berm and and reinforce it and that's why clear cutting ruins streams and causes mudslides and all sorts of other stuff in the real world not in the fish tank world uh also you can see i've got the hydrocodal um chaparta and the reticulata i've got the mermaid weed just for some interesting texture i'll probably do some more of that and then the anubius is really going on up here uh, Blixa, uh, you know, I'm not positive what you would say it requires, but I think it does need decent light, and it does need, uh, it doesn't need CO2, but to look good, it does. So, I don't know, that kind of bugs me when people are like, oh, it doesn't need CO2, it just won't carpet it, and it'll turn yellow and, like, have no leaves. <laughs> well, then it kind of needs it. Um... But yeah, so I think it needs just a little bit, a little bit of CO2, even like the home kits. And from there, um, the light, I think it's interchangeable. You could either do quite a bit of CO2 or quite a bit of light. But if you got light, ferts, and CO2, if you got two parts of that, the triangle of keeping plants alive, um, you're probably going to be alright with the Blix up. Here you can see it. Uh, it's just a nice sturdy grass. It's a true aquatic grass, which is nice. Um, unlike other things, um, this is not Blixa, but this could be another option for you. This is a total low light. I mean, these are 5 watt LEDs. And uh, this is... Um, uh, Cypress Health Rye, and it's been growing there for, oh, I don't know, six months, not really growing much in height, um, but spread enough that I was able to replant it and put it around other places, um, but you could also use things like that. By the way, here are the little plecos right now. Come on. It looks like that'll be a male, probably. It's interesting. You can kind of tell their gender a little bit by the, the width of their body and, and their head and everything and their tail uh, when they're real young. And then for another year or two, you won't be able to tell anything. And then you'll be able to tell again later by their... Uh, on a, what are they called? Onodotads? I'm totally saying that wrong. And it, uh, 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 I'm not even going to try. Alright. So, I wanted to just show you here. I'm turning off the gas for the night. It's purling up a storm. So this tank you used to see all the rock into. And now it's just a jungle. It needs to be cut back. Added to the tank downstairs. But... Lots of blue shrimp living in this tank now. The black and the black and uh, red tiger lotus, uh, not tiger lotus, tiger crypt, doing great. Um, looking beautiful. So hopefully downstairs it does the same. You can see more shrimp. Brought a bunch of baby shrimp up here, and really with CPDs and. Uh, other uh, teeny tiny nano fish. So we got erythromycons, CPDs, and uh, Pseudomagill reticulatus, those little blue eyes. 
No one's going to eat him. And two Corys. The Corys could eat the shrimp. Hold on, let me open the door. I'm dying here of heat. Is it any cooler? Seattle is just smoggy right now. There's forest fires and... Ugh, it's just, it's smoggy and hot, not like normal Seattle weather. Um, yes, it is close to a 20, it's a 17 gallon, and there's a uh, Fluval Aquia skylight on there, and then there's an Archeon, or Archeon, um, I don't know what the, if there's a line number or anything like that, but the Archeon, uh, lights system that I think these are about both just 24 inch like size wise but I do like the Fluval lights have you know these extenders that come out an extra six inches to a foot depending on what light you have but you'll see how the the moss the Christmas tree or weeping willow moss things like that um, will come out and fan out like this like in layers and sheets and then that hydrocotyl will wrap around things and the stargrass will grow in and blanket everything with the um with the crypts in between at just just as it is doing here hopefully it too will do downstairs and then uh, i also have the baby tears so between those three i'm hoping to kind of maybe do a color a color scheme between them all uh, lastly, talking about aquascapes, I'm going to need to change this aquascape up. I heard a creaking and it made me real nervous by all the, all the rock in here. If you notice the rock was not being supported on the glass at all, but now it's touching the glass and I'm real worried about that. So uh, I need to figure that out. Also, this thing looks foggy. It's not like bad water. It's just, uh, if you look close, it's diatone. But here is the beautiful new filter that I was able to swipe the other filter that I got recently for this and put it downstairs. But this is the filter that Jess Shrimp Granny sent. And it's got... It's like overkill to the max, you know, and I was able to kind of beef it up myself by adding more surface area and bio rings and stuff like that. So uh, it's overkill filtration for this 41 point whatever gallon. And right now we're kind of down some fish because I scooped out some of the uh, extra tetras I had in here to take them downstairs. Aqua balls. Hello. Um, the last tank that we're looking at today, I'm not going to go outside, I just wanted to show you because, uh, he or she is out here, but my peach, oh, it's not going to show up the way I see it, lame, my peach mystery snails with the mother of pearl shells are turning out like beautiful, <clears throat> and... Each tank, I kind of have different ram's horn snails, and if you know, other ones pop up, but there's like a predominant theme in each tank. Now, this tank, I need an, a flying fox, as they're known. I've got auto sinkless, the marbled auto sinkless, which I think are super rad, are in here, plus Lucas's king breeder uh, of the tiger endler. None of the offspring have been so stunning as as uh, this guy here with the purple that turns to yellow. That turn, I mean, it's just incredible. So I'm hoping that one of these females uh, eventually produces something close to him that I can breed off of also and have two tanks going. Plus there's the fire ring Danios and the gold ring Danios or tin winnie. Uh, hanging out there and then down here we've got our shrimp our, which are from Lucas Brett's also uh, there's another one down there so <clears throat> everything is peachy keen except for me I'm plum sweaty and red and uh, 
pretty much done. Let me look at the, the chat questions. Um, I miss, they're about to get moved. Do, do, do. Yeah, so I am just hot and tired and running on fumes here, but I wanted to show you guys that new tank. I have a video that I put up earlier tonight, I, I believe it should be loaded by now, that talks to you guys about kind of the process of building that up and working on that. This tank is designed, I want to watch, um, I want to watch fluid motion of, of, uh, schools of fish. Uh, are you, were you ever an Aquar Aquarius Central member? I was not. Um, but, um, yeah, I just wanted to have a little live chat tonight, and, uh, what were the spotted fish in the last tank? Those were, uh, fish dreams, those were, um, Daniels. Let me show you, like, I'll go back into the, go back into the danger zone. The, this house, by the way, the reason I was hit by lightning is it's made out of sheet metal it's worse than sheet metal it's like thick corrugated not not even corrugated like double corrugated thickness and then the roof is made out of metal and uh it's it's just it sucks the insulation is awful too um so we just get it just gets hot at least it kind of cools off at night but uh these guys i love daniels I am considering swapping out the Tetras and the Daniels. So the fire ring ones are the larger ones. And you can see they've got some orange in their tail here. There's better videos that aren't on live streams. But they're kind of a purple and orange. And then the little brass and silver or gold colored ones if i step back you can probably make them out which are which a little bit better like these little ones are called tin winnie or gold ring daniels and i love them i'm thinking of doing down in that tank grabbing all those uh <laughs> dollar fish out of there um Let's see here. If you mix shrimp together, both Caridina and Neo Caridina, do they interbreed? No, they do not interbreed. Um, but I have and I do mix them together, and they have their own. Ba I mean, they have babies of their own with each other. Uh, just be careful, like if you're gonna have, you know, a uh, crystal and. Uh, bolt or a bee or like look in if, you, if you're mixing a bunch of shrimp look into what you're really getting I'm also thinking about moving this rock downstairs into the display um, just because I love that moss growing straight out of the cracks which I had nothing to do with it's just nature being awesome uh, and also uh, these lights they grow things super well but it just washes everything out, reflects green. And so this red that, let's see if you can see, is like a really nice peach red. Um, it just overpowers, just, uh, I don't know. And then the difference between the little silver tip tetras, uh, so there's the lone silver tip in here, who looks green. <laughs> and then uh, here are the embers. And here are the orange-eyed lemon tetras. And then instead of the black neons, here are the Tucano tetras, which are skinnier, and they've got orange behind their head. Uh, all right. Jam with it. Hey, man, just want to say love your videos and knowledge. You drop really encourage me to try new things with my 75 gallons. That's awesome, dude. Please feel free to join our Facebook group under the same name. Share some pictures or videos of whatever you're doing. I love to I love to see that people are inspiring each other on here. Uh, aqua balls. I have some yellow shrimp, neon caradina. Now in my 8-gallon, I see a bunch of babies. 
Probably had babies. Congratulations. Baby shrimp are awesome, as Jess said. Uh, make sure they have enough um, algae and like plankton stuff in the water to eat. So throw a catapa leaf in there, let it start decaying, you know, the drill. And, uh, or bring even if you have another tank somewhere, get a, a, a rock with some algae on it or mo moss or whatever. And that really encourages, uh, that really encourages the, uh, the survival rate. Did you guys see the size of that pleco? So I'm going to come around the corner. I might scare it again. Look how big these guys, this tank, I don't know what is in it, like, what the heck is in it, but I can grow out plecos in this tank, and shrimp, anything that comes in this tank, become supersized immediately. It is bizarre. I don't, I don't, I don't understand the laws of physics. My mind is blown. Uh, I'm going to go downstairs and go grab a bunch more and throw them in here. They seem to be cleaning stuff up. They do carry a big bio load, but I'm going to throw another seven or eight in here um, because there's already a lot of diatome that I scrape all the time in this tank with these lights blasting plus the hot temps. But, yeah, the bigger the tank you have, the more healthy and balanced the ecosystem is. You'll really get some... Uh, growth on your organisms unlike anything that you can get in a little tank um what live cultures and food do you keep uh yeah i have vinegar eels i have uh micro worms and grindle worms i also do outside i've got the mosquito larva that just you know i have what i have depending on how many mosquitoes are outside and then i also have uh Daphnia for now. I don't know how long I'll keep them alive on accident, but yeah. Uh, poop Lincoln logs. Uh, all right, guys. Well, take care. I hope that you guys all have a wonderful night. Um, I'm going to get some rest. I need it. And I have not forgotten about history on this channel. Um, I'm just... Uh, it's easier for me to just talk off the cuff than to get exact dates and everything right without being too robotic because I can't, when I read it's double vision, um, but I will be doing more history at some point, I promise. Boy, my hair looks like, I look like if, if the professor from, uh, pr from, uh, Back to the Future was like, I don't know. 30. That's what my hair looks like right now or something. I think I'm balding. In any case, guys, uh, yeah, tetracolor granules, that is a good one. Uh, Sarah makes a lot of good food. And then also uh, Bottom Scratcher, I think that's what it's called, by Rapashi. That, that's another good one. But I've just been feeding them... Uh, well, these guys have been feeding nothing, and they're growing way faster than any of the other uh, plecos I have. Um, but choya wood and green beans is what I've been feeding them, mostly with some algae and spirulina supplements. Um, and uh, for shrimp, I use Bacter AE a little bit. I just put a little, little uh, plop in every six months or something like that otherwise i've noticed i get like crazy amounts of bacteria growing on everything um but that's me everybody's water's different um and yeah all right guys uh yeah i thanks jess i i try to like put some facts and uh uh technology yes and uh Jess, I try to put facts and history and things like that as I remember it, recall it, or come across it if I've been reading about it for the channel. Um, by the way, here is a good example of just the leopard uh, style endlers that I raised that are pure yellow. Um, there in here. This is all male 
Endlers in here. Um, but drop me a comment after the video on what you think I should put in the tank downstairs. That's just holding that stuff right now, honestly, because, uh, because why not? Uh, it was, they were cheap, and honestly, I can find a home for them really quickly if I need to. But, um, I want blue Hikari Danyas. I just don't know what their temperament's like. I've never kept them, but they look beautiful. Uh, and I thought about neon Tetras and things like that, and they are beautiful. I love them. They've got great color. I just don't know. So here's the original Japanese blue, by the way, all washed out. No good in this light. But... Um, those are the original Japanese blue endlers from Japan. They have a little bit of green in their belly under certain lights on that black spot. And then they have a little bit of purple. But the ones I have been raising, as you saw, were a little different. Um, and then right here, that is the... Hold still, of course. He's chilling non-stop. And then just breaks away these are the biggest Daniels I have I don't have any giant Daniels or zebra Daniels right now but uh, these leopard Daniels are really beautiful they're like a copper color uh, in the natural Sun or in the daytime and then they have yellow on their tails uh, but here's the tiger endlers uh, stripe there and then the leopard endlers are I don't know where they went but so that's the drill. That's what's going on in here. Um, all right, you guys. Thanks again, Bob, for the super chat. That means a lot. All the Patreon supporters. Info's in the... Uh, a link is in the description if you guys want to support the channel that way. If you guys just want to support the channel by watching, I totally understand. Uh, joining the Facebook community and just... You know, telling your friends to watch if 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 you dig it, uh, that means a lot to me. So, thanks for joining us tonight, uh, Alex. You ever kept uh, Chopper Daniels? Yeah, Glow Light Daniels. I have three or four in the tank in in right in there. Uh, I love them. They do get a little big. They get a little bit bitey. So <laughs> that being said, all those Daniels that are in there, other than the Tin Winnie, do that. So. Um, and even the Tin Winnie, the, the gold ring ones, uh, are in the tank, uh, the high-tech high tank up here. Those, though, are, um, what do you call them? Uh, sorry, guys, brain shutting down. Uh, the Celestio Pearls and the Erythromicrons. And so those... Um, are in that style that family but they're very very shy and timid compared to the others so I've split them up don't keep them with the Chopre or the Kyathit or any of the other big Danios uh, like leopards and giant Danios or things like that uh, they are from Lake Inle which is near um, uh, the, the border with Thailand and Myanmar, or, and formerly known as Burma, the artist formerly known as Burma. And uh, it's a very unstable area. Fascinating. I'd love to do more info. I have done a few things on it. The genocide going on there right now. The refugees there right now. The history of just insanity there. Um, I think I did it talking about CPDs, I believe. Uh, or erythromicrons, one of them, if you want to go back and look at the video. But very interesting. And this whole tank back here, that big glowing orb, is Lake Inlay critters and some fry from. Oh, by the way, the Pleco is out and he's starting to color up and look really nice. This, or she? Maybe it's a she. I think it's a she. I don't see anything going on. But nice high fin for being just a... For just being an ancestress. Uh, very nice looking Pleco. Awesome. I'm stoked. Uh, I literally hadn't seen uh, it displaying in so long. They love the warm water in this warm spell. 
Uh, none of the other fish do. I also have an L183 in here somewhere. Uh, he has been hiding, I believe it to be a he. And then there's some quarries. There's two quarries hiding in here. You can fit a lot of critters in here. By the way, look at these snails. They're silver and white. They're not um, bladder snails. They are not, you know, black pond snail type things. Uh, and uh, I got to figure out what they are. I just haven't really put any effort into it. So, um, yeah, but if anybody's in my area and they have some... Uh, either Corydora sturbi or Julii. Um, yeah, Technoala, uh, go to Aquarium Zen. They've got a bunch. Uh, and also, I believe Aquarium Co-op has some, but their prices are quite a bit higher. I think you can get them for like $8.99 to $10.99 at Aquarium Zen. Uh, the albino long fin at ancestors when they have them it might be like thirteen ninety nine for the long fins that are like middle aged. Uh, the the near adult ones are probably like thirteen, whereas like the little baby ones, I think they're like five ninety nine right now. He had a bunch in there. Steve, the owner, I'm friends with. He had a bunch in there. Um, also, what are we looking at here? Oh, just more fry. I also added a little bit of uh, crushed coral here because now we do have the shrimp living in here so since we've got neocaridina shrimp you gotta get that coral and then speak of the shrimp on the boost the boost is loose and it's looking good so um yeah yeah well good luck um i, I am also trying to find several things i would love a new pair of pleco to breed other than ancestress or green dragon or rubber lip um i would love one of the more colorful ones blue phantoms or something like that would be great so if anybody in the seattle area has something especially with blue coloration on it or patterns uh and the tall fin let me know i am looking also just like Technoala is. Uh, but yeah, that's really nice for just a Calico, uh, Pleco, um, just chilling and uh, has been getting fat just with this warm weather. I can't keep the tanks at the 72 that this tank usually is at. And so, uh, so should I put coral in my knee? Um, I would measure the the TDS, the total dissolved solids, and if your TDS is under 100, you should add some coral. Um, you can get a tester online on Amazon for 15 bucks or 12 bucks if you have Prime's free shipping. Um, and then, uh, what else was I going to let you know? I don't remember what I was going to let you know. Uh, something about... Oh, yeah, you can test your GH and KH. But uh, as long as you don't have any other shrimp or other things, uh, just uh, you can put a little bit of coral and don't go crazy. Put like uh, a handful in first, and, and uh, really, you only need to do it if your shrimp are dying, like when their molts aren't coming off, like, like when they have the split in their, in their carapace and then they die. Um, yeah, if your KH is 5, GH is 4, you could have that GH higher, honestly, but I they'll probably be okay. I just look out for failed molts, and if, if they fail uh, to, ha to molt properly, um, I think, yeah. But most are fine, like even in like a Caridina tank. I've had mine all the way at 0, um, KH before, uh, but, yeah, ooh, look at the eyes on that guy, uh, oh, you've had a few die right after, then yes, I would add some, either calcium, yep, listen to what Jess just said, a little bit of calcium, either the eggs crushed up and boil, uh, eggshells crushed up, boiled, uh, put them in the hang off the back filter or in a media uh, substrate 
media type bag, a filter media bag, or just get some crushed coral. Um, that's fine. It doesn't have a ton of calcium. It does have some, uh, but if you're looking for just pure calcium, Cuddlebone from the like Petco, PetSmart online, it's like a buck for like the thing for the bird, uh, the actual cuddle bone. So yeah, half a cup, that's probably fine just to see what happens. Um, and, uh, obviously if they're getting stuck in their shells cause they're too hard, then that's another problem. But if they're reproducing and not dying in exponential rates, they're probably fine. Um, oh, yellow shrimp, I got 13 and only three served one gave me a bunch of babies i mainly give mine eggshells to eat i've never really done the filter thing uh thoughts on a dirty tank i like aqua soil like fluval uh like these kind of things this is all ada light i really like it it's easy it is expensive as all heck but it grows plants like no tomorrow for a good two years uh, dirted tanks I did when I was younger just out of necessity and also uh, great to do just look up the um, oh now I'm gonna feel like a jerk uh, is it not Waldron but the Wallstead method and uh, uh, I'd use aragonite uh, for the calcium if I was gonna use any stone and uh, yeah. All right, guys. So take care. I hope you guys uh, are all doing well. Um, Jason Holmes, you might be right. Uh, but for now, I like them too. So too bad. All right, guys. Everybody, I'll take uh, I'll take you around for a different kind of show next time, probably. Uh, and uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of your fish, your critters, the people around you. And uh, thank you for tuning in, sharing links, uh, super chats, and uh, Patreon contributors. It's made a really big difference. So you guys keep me going. Keep me inspired when I'm feeling run down. Uh, love you guys. <laughs> no. So good to see you all. Have a good night and swim on.